Hello everybody and welcome to this week's video. Um, now after last week's video, which I'll put a link up here to, um, I got really excited about the fact that I'd found a site really close to where I live, within walking distance actually, where we'd got um, at least four red kites. And this is in Nottinghamshire, so we very rarely get red kites at all. Um, so I stopped the vlog I was anticipating to do and sort of went off and did a vlog on red kites. Now, after I looked at that objectively, after I um, got back and then released the video, I realised that it was actually, the images were at best average. Um, and I wondered really what had gone wrong. So anyway, in this video, what I'm going to do is tell you what I think went wrong and what I've done um, this last week and hopefully you'll see what I'm going to do at the end of the video is put a series of images of red kites that I've taken in the last week and hopefully, you, hopefully you'll see a progression there and I'll tell you what I think I've changed and why in my opinion these shots are far superior to the ones I took last week and actually I feel like I've really nailed it this week so stick around for the images at the end and I'll go through what I think happened over this week, the things I've changed that have made these images so much better. So what do I think happened last week and what have I changed over this last five or six days that I think has made these images so much better? And it really, I think the first thing to remember is, although I've been doing wildlife photography for 20 years, give or take a year or so, I actually spend most of my time, or I have done in the past, doing mammal photography, and I probably worked it out at something like 85% of my time has been doing mammal photography, with the other 15% doing bird photography, of which birds in, uh, birds in flight was less than 5%. So immediately there you can see that I've got, although I've got a lot of experience doing wildlife photography, thinking about it, I've not done a lot of bird in flight photography. And the next issue was I was going um, to photograph an, a, a bird that I'd never photographed before, so I had no intelligence on its sort of habits, what it would do. Now over, over this last sort of five days what I've done is, because we're now in British summertime and you know it's light till half past seven, eight o'clock at night sometimes, it's a good day. Um, I've been able to get out after work and come up here onto the airfield and just try and see what the, the, the kites are doing. And for the first couple of days we had that northeasterly wind. And I thought, well, when I first photographed them in the vlog, they would, it was a southwesterly breeze, but it was a very strong wind. I think I mentioned in the video that it was up to like 35, 40 mile an hour gusts. Um, after that, the following couple of days, three days probably, it's been a northeasterly wind, so the wind completely switched round. Now, I expected that that would change the kite's behaviour. So I came up looking for the kites. They weren't in the area I'd seen them originally, so I sort of went round the airfield looking, and I did see a kite in the distance over one of the woods in the north. So I went across there, and it seemed to me what the kites were doing was they were doing a, a sort of an anti-clockwise circuit, um, so going from the northeast to the southwest, and then sort of circuiting around the woods around the airfield and then coming back from the north and then doing it again. And when the wind eventually changed into a, 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 um, a southwesterly, which it is today, they're still doing exactly the same circuit. So it doesn't really seem to affect the, you know, the, the direction or where they're actually hanging out. And I found that this wood here in the north seems to be the starting point for that um, rotation that they do. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know. But what I did find when I came down here, there's a little area here where the fields cut into the wood. Um, it's not a straight bank. There's just a little rectangle of land in between two areas um, that's cut in between the wood. And I found that that is a really good place to photograph the kites because you've got that open sky with the wood on either side. So this is where I've been coming to the last few days. And already today I've been here and I've taken some shots already. I'm here actually today to try and get some video as well for this, uh, this vlog that's going out because I'm already really happy with the images I've got. So that's point one. 
I, need, I really needed to do more research and I need, needed to know the bird a lot better than I did initially. Um, you know, its habits and, and where it was going to be before I started, um, you know, trying to take some pieces of images. So, you know, I was giving myself a bit of a kick in for those images, but I think the reason I wanted to get that blog out is I was so excited that we'd got red kites in Nottinghamshire that any image at all, you know, I was just so happy with it. It's only when I sat down after I'd released it and looked at the images and thought, hmm, yeah, they're average at best. So, I think it needed to go out because, as I say, you know, we don't get them in Nottinghamshire very often and to get, I think there's at least four here now um, from the numbers that I'm seeing anyway. So that was point one. Now then, point two is a little bit more of a sore subject really. Um, I think like most photographers, and I'm guilty of this myself, I've been, as I said, you know, doing this for a long time now and, and when the images weren't what I expected them to be. My first thought was there's something wrong with the kit. So I'm immediately doing YouTube searches looking for, um, you know, the Sony 200, 600 lens, birds in flight, is there anything I'm doing wrong? Um, is there something that the camera should be doing that isn't or the lens is do doing that isn't? And uh, I mean, basically the settings I used when I first took those first images I was shooting at 1250th of a second at f7.1 and the lowest ISO I could get to and I thought that was sufficient now bearing in mind on this camera which is a crop sensor that's the equivalent of a 900mm lens and I think the two problems really the first one was that the birds were too far away I was expecting too much um, you know from even for this lens to, to shoot them at that distance was just you know, it's just not going to happen really um, I did look on the internet and find on YouTube a couple of people who'd had issues with if you're shooting at a high shutter speed they don't use the IS because that can cause um, the image to look blurred another person said that if you're shooting into the sky and it's a warm day then you've got the heat haze that can make an image look blurred and I thought well it was bloody freezing when I was up there so there's no heat haze around then I thought, well, is there a problem with the lens? Is, is it broken in some way? So the only thing I could come to in conclusion was that when I was shooting images of things like hares or pheasants on the ground that were still, the images were pin sharp. So I had to come to the conclusion that it was pilot error. It was something that I was doing wrong. And as I've said, if I've only done 5% bird in flight photography in that 20 years that's not an awful lot and I'm using a new camera and lens combination so I had to come to the conclusion that it was me that was doing something wrong so the first thing I just thought well and if you've seen my beginners videos I say that I always shoot in aperture priority I actually made a change I shot in complete manual control so that's the change I made um, basically manual control of the whole camera um, and what I have done is I've uh, put the camera in auto ISO with a limit of 6400. What that means is then is that I can quickly switch between shutter speed depending on what subject I'm shooting. So when I came up sort of the second or third time I switched from 1250th of a second to 1600th of a second and immediately the images were better. I was also closer, admittedly, I got some nice close shots, or closer, because I was learning the habits of the birds as well, so that was helping. Um, still not absolutely brilliant, but better than average, I thought, for that, you know, for that um, type of shot where I'm not at a feed station or something, it's completely wild, they're just passing over or whatever. So I was really pleased with that. So then when the last time I came up, I shot at one two thousandth of a second and I literally, this piece of um, field here that's just now been planted with seed, I was lying on my back in the middle of there with the camera sort of resting on my face, pointing straight up as these kites were above me and I'm really happy with the shots. Um, so yeah, that's that's really what's happened and I think the sort of the, the point I'd get across to you is, you know, I, as I say, I've been doing this for a long time. I don't like to keep saying that, but I have. But I'm still learning. We're all still learning. When you change kit, when you try something new, when you're shooting a different species, you know, if you can pick something up and learn, it's never a lost day, really. So that 
start sort of inspired me that start with that first vlog that I did on red kites to go away and think look you can do better than that there's something you're not doing right and you know really that's all I've done I've just come away tried to think my way through the problem what am I doing wrong what can I change um, what can possibly wrong if I know it's not the kit which I knew it wasn't what am I doing that I can change to make it better and hopefully what I'm going to do at the end of this video is put those images that I've taken in chronological order of the dates they were taken I'll put all the information up on those images and hopefully you can see with that that there is a massive improvement right so while we wait for these hopefully these kites to turn up if um, if their behaviour is as normal hopefully they will today I'll just show you a little bit about where I am this is the old um, Ossington airfield and this as you can see is straw that's probably been here for quite a while I think they're still collecting it off here actually I'm having to be quite careful here because the large stack there in the front I think there's potentially kestrels nesting so I've actually come round a little trackway around the back so as not to disturb them over there and now this is the little bit of field I was talking about as you can see it's cut in here and the kites tend to come over in fact what's that just over the trees I think I'm going to have to get back to the camera um, that looks suspiciously like a kite so hopefully it'll come over here right so we'll try again um, hopefully we won't well actually if we get dessert, if we get uh, disturbed by red kites I'm not too bothered but um, yeah so I showed you the concrete area which is behind me which you're going to be looking directly into the sun hopefully I can shield that from you a bit and as I said there's some kestrels in that stack over there this is the the soil area here the field that cuts into the wood where they're coming over um, and they tend to just drift up and then yesterday when I came up they were just really low they were just literally clipping the tops of the trees and then they circled up and away that way so um, I'm hoping for something similar today they do tend to sort of hug the edge of this wood with it being a westerly wind they may head more up straight up that way this time you never can tell but that's not what they've been doing so I'm hoping um, that we're going to be okay again today but we'll see as I say I'm quite happy with the images I've got I really just want to get some film if I can so uh, I'm all set up for filming today and I'll show you what what my setup is for that right so filming wise um, I've actually I think I've slipped up a little bit and in my video where I said what my video settings were and I'll put a link up there to that video um, what I generally shoot is I shoot a lot of slow motion so 120 frames a second so for that the shutter speed has to be 250th of a second and because it's a really bright day today with a blue sky um, lots of sunshine I'm going to be up at like f13 now normally what you would do to, to, to combat that I mean it doesn't really matter so much because depth of field in the sky there's not really going to be an awful lot behind it only sky so if it's up there it's not going to make any difference but I did say in that video that I was getting a um, a filter to darken the front of the lens so I actually did get a six stop filter and what I'm finding is at the minute it's just too dark I could do with something like a three stop so somebody did, did mention to me getting a variable um, density filter that you can actually just twist to change how dark it is um, I think I'm going to give one of, one of those a try but I'm just not really sure what the quality of those are like um, you know I don't really want to introduce any vignetting or anything in the in the footage when I do it so um, yeah I'm gonna to have to look for some recommendations for that if anybody has got any recommendations for a, a variable um, density neutral density filter to stick on a, a 95 mil lens then please yeah stick them in the comments below so yeah today I'm probably about f13 quite a large depth of field just to try and get down to 250th of a second um, so that I can shoot this slow motion footage and um, yeah hopefully the, sh the kites will come over and we can uh, we can do that but it's a waiting game at the minute but I'm much more confident here um, that I'm going to get some kite action than I was in my previous position when I did the, the first video so yeah we'll just 
you know, all you can do is wait and hope, really. And we'll see what happens. Right, I think I've, I've just caught sight of a red kite through the trees. Oh, it looks like it's, it, it looks like it's coming back this way. Um, I'm just gonna have to, I'm just gonna have to stick you down there a minute. I think he's coming over the top of the trees. Lost him, I've got him again. He's not sticking around for long. He looks like he's drifting straight through. Uh, I think I've got a little bit of, of useful footage here. Well, that was short and sweet. He came straight through over the top of the trees. I actually probably didn't see any of that but <laughs> I, he actually came saw him briefly here and then the next minute it was coming over the top of the trees here um, spin you around so you can see over here but then he's, he's drifted that way so I managed to get a shot I think you'll have already seen it anyway if I did um, but proves my point they drifted off way in that direction earlier and they've done a circuit and come back over the wood that's one there was there's at least another one I think that was a male because it was quite small but we'll wait around here for a bit longer and see if uh, if anything else turns up but at least I've got a little bit of footage um, not brilliant footage but better than nothing and as I say I'm seeing them every day now so at least I know that the field work that I've done is paying off. <sighs> ah, that was a little bit of excitement. Anyway, that's really it for this week. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this vlog. I'm going to try and get some, uh, some footage. You'll have already seen it on this video um, if I've got it. Um, if not, there won't be any. That's the only thing I'm lacking at the minute. Again, I was so enthralled with checking images the other day. And to be honest, I didn't bring this big big tripod. I was shooting handheld, so um, yeah, it was it would have been a bit difficult to take uh, any footage. So I'm hoping that that's going to change today. Um, I will uh, no doubt see you next week for another video. I hope you've enjoyed this one. I hope you've taken something from it, and I hope you enjoy the images at the end. If you've not subscribed to the channel, then please think about subscribing. And please give us a big thumbs up. Uh, it really does help to boost the channel and uh, move us forward. And I'll see you next week. Cheers. Bye.